England, let's talk about them, shall we? Because they're in action tonight as they take on Brazil at Wembley, gearing up for the Euros. Um, in terms of your thoughts of Gareth Southgate, Mer lots of mixed views on whether or not he is the right man to lead England. What's, what's your view on Gareth Southgate? I'm a big fan of him. Yeah? Yeah, I'm a big fan of him. Um, know him personally, great guy, great man manager. Um, I think what he's done with England is amazing. You know, I know everyone's talking about trophies and everything, and hopefully he will get his trophy this summer. But for me, he's, he's, he's done incredibly well, and I love the fact that he stood by so many players during during difficult times. Mm -hmm. So Harry Maguire is a, is a, is a, an obvious example for me. Yeah, it's amazing. I was saying to Natalie earlier in the show, Stephen, that I had a friend who was criticising Gareth, and I said to him the line, "Well, what about if they win the Euros? Don't matter. They should have won the previous Euros and World Cup." It's like, well, you can't, you cannot win. Now, I understand you might have certain ideas about how England lost because we're all ultra critical. We all know the answers mm -hmm. and what we see in front of us, how they lost against Croatia. They lose a penalty shootout, you know, against France and they're likewise in the okay. Euros against Italy. All these things, they're very small margins that I think can be overcome. I, I agree. I mean, pen, for me, penalty shootout is, is potluck. You know, yeah. like it's 50-50 which way it's going to go. So I think to have got England to that stage where they're, they're narrowly missing out um, in, in, the, in the previous two tournaments for me is, is unbelievable. And, I, and also, I think that if you remember where he started from, where England were when he took over, yeah. um, I mean, I know because I was involved, you know, back then. Yeah, we, yeah. we were a long way from, from winning World Cups and Euros. So the fact that we're, you know, headed into this tournament possibly mm. as favourites or at least one of the favourites, I think shows, uh, mm. you know, the, the good progress that he's made. So, OK, if I asked you, the opinion of England outside of England, because mm -hmm. I know only from people I've spoke to, they all think England have got a fantastic side now. They all look at England and think they're the ones to beat. Now, yeah. would you say the same of being, because you've obviously been in Turkey, you've been in Spain. Everyone, everyone looks at England as a, as a really, really good side with really good players. And mm -hmm. I think everyone's aware of what England are capable of doing. They just need to do it. You know, mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's ultimately what it comes down to is getting it across the line, you know, come this summer. But I believe they will. And, and I, you know, I just said I love, I love the way he handles uh, the team. I love the way he handles the pressure. Um, I said, for me, he's a top manager. And I think that people don't quite realise what we have right now, you know, because... Mm -hmm. There's always expectations as fans, right, that you should win every single tournament, every single game. But um, that these things take time, and he's had a lot of time. I, I do agree with that. Um, but let's just let's just see this summer. Let's get behind the boys, um, focus on the absolute incredible talent that we have nowadays, and uh, let's let's see what it brings. Obviously, it's June the seventh is when he has to. Um, what I'm trying to say, uh, give in or not give in? A squad. Yes. What's the word Announce. I'm trying to say? Announce. Announce. Yeah. Submit. Submit is the word I'm trying to say. Submit to the squad to UEFA. Goodness me. You see, the extra hour does affect yeah. us. Um, that's the problem. Yeah. June the 7th is when he had to submit his final squad for the Euros. Now, we're not going to see Harry Kane tonight because he is injured. He might not even play against Belgium on Tuesday. There's also no Cole Palmer. There's also no Jordan Henderson for tonight. As we know, Bakaya Saka is out of the squad as well through injury. So there's a few issues for him to contend with. And maybe Cole Palmer not, might not be directly one of those that would mm. necessarily be in that starting eleven. But in terms of you, if we're going for a striking option, who would you be picking tonight? Tonight, Ollie Watkins. Yeah? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. I think Ollie Watkins is, is the most, uh, well, aside from Harry Kane, he's the most informed England striker. Mm -hmm. So, for me, I've got Ollie Watkins. I think he's done incredibly well uh, during his time at Aston Villa. He's gone from strength to strength. Strength to strength this season, he's been he's been amazing. Um, I would love to see him wear the shirt tonight. How many of the present England crop were in the squad when you were there, Stephen? Is there many? Not many at all. No. Um, just put me on a spot. I can't think of it. Carl Walker. Carl Walker. Carl I was going to say I wondered. I was thinking if you went back as far, probably Harry, you'd just missed. Yeah. You, no, I wasn't in the same England no. squad with him. No, no, I, came, I, just I came. Wondered. I came through with him at Tottenham. We were, right. we were in the same youth team together. Because um, week he went on loan to Millwall and Norwich and things like that. I mean, you know, Harry's right. as a player is a perfect mm. example of how you can improve. No, absolutely. He's, he wasn't one in our youth team who I thought was was going to probably make it to the Premier League. In all honesty, and never might make it to the Premier League. You know, he's yeah. gone on and taken the Premier League by storm uh, and the Bundesliga now as well. <laughs> so he's someone who's. Uh, improved so much but that's down to his, his work rate like he was so focused even back then so dedicated and um, really happy to see him reaping the rewards for that good mm. we've had um, Gerard Piquet in TalkSport this week and he was asked the question about the best defender uh, English defender that he uh, played with or against let's just hear what he had to say on that 
for me when i arrived there for me he was the guy to to really see what he's doing to learn from him to he gave a lot of advice at that time that was very good for me um so yeah i consider him also some people they say john terry for me rio was the best uh, of all time in the premier league at, at least from what i saw because sometimes what happened off the pitch seems that people consider you a little bit less for what, because you have different interests outside of the, the pitch, etc. And Rio is this style of guy like I am in Spain. But then on the pitch, he was like incredible. He performed always at a very high level and was a great example. Would you agree with that? Is he the best? Um, <laughs> you know what? I'm he was unbelievable, by the way. Incredible. Um, I'm just going to put one name before him, which might surprise a few people, and that would be Ledley King. Mm. Yeah, okay, for me, yeah. Ledley King, if, if he was able to stay fit, um, he was he was just unbelievable. You know, the fact he only trained one day a week and mm. would go out on a Saturday and get MOM, he was he was something else. Sher Sheridan says the same, same thing about Ledley, Ledley King. Yeah, now, um, loads of Tottenham players I have known over the years speak about Ledley. He was basically, as much as Paul McGraw with Ireland, his knee injury was probably even more severe than Paul. Yeah. Because he played games and he clearly wasn't fit, but he mm. stood out every time he played. Yeah, he was unbelievable. But but Rio, a very, very close second. Yeah. Um, unbelievable player. Fortunate enough to, to play with him towards the end of his career at QPR. Um, mm. Great guy on and off the pitch. A real leader, mm. I imagine. Yeah, he's certainly a leader. Yeah, and like PK said there, he's got a lot of interest off the pitch. You know, he's a businessman, entrepreneur. You know, he's got so many things juggling <laughs> at once. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, during his time at United, he was, he was unbelievable. Uh, and in terms of your preferred centre back partnership for England, would you be able to, I mean, we've got, I'm just looking at the squad now. You've got obviously Harry Maguire, John Stones, uh, Lewis Dunks in there, Jared Branthwaite's been called up, uh, Esri Konza can, is a bit versatile yeah. in that defensive lineup as well. Um, would it be a Harry Maguire, John Stones? Is that the first choice? That'd be the first choice, yeah. I would like, to, I mean, I'm a big fan of Dunk as well. I think he's he's another top player, so good on the, so good on the ball as well, as he's shown at Brighton. Um, in terms of like this evening, I'd like to see Jared given a, an opportunity. Mm. You know, I think he's done really well at Everton this year. He's, he's a young player coming mm. through and um, I would like to see him given an opportunity. If not tonight, then, then hopefully in the next game. I mean, that's ultimately what these next couple of games really should be about. I imagine yeah. the June friendlies will be a bit more honing tactical, let's say. Maybe, maybe, yeah. not, maybe less. And avoiding injury as yeah. well. Yeah, but the next couple of games, this is when you really want to try try things out. You imagine from an England perspective. Yeah, certainly Southgate will be looking to see who he can who he can count on. I mean, he's someone that you see him regularly at Premier League games, so I'm sure he's watching. You know, every every game around around the world. To be honest with you, to to see who's who's performing, who's in form, who's out of form. Um, but I don't think he actually tends to pick players based on form. You know, mm -hmm. if, if I'm honest with you, he, he picks players that he trusts and players that he knows. You know, as I said, I used the Maguire example earlier and that, that was a good example. He trusted in, in Harry. He knew uh, what he was capable of and, and Harry repaid his faith. Every time he played for England, he was it was incredible. You know, he was having yeah. a tough time at United, but he, he, he trusted in him. So I'm not 100% sure Southgate picks players based on form. Um, I think he, he picks players that, that he trusts and, mm. and that, that fit his style of play. A bit in this period, it's always important how training goes, as in, you know, the group and settling, mixing in and just getting the feeling right within the camp. Yeah. It's really important because you, when you get to Germany and you'll have three weeks build up and there's a lot of things that happen in tournaments. People get injured. We lost two or three going to World Cup 94. I was one of them, got injured in the build up. Mm. Um, you know, and so you're very conscious about the build up to everything and how they're settling in around. Of course, the games are the most important, but it's not all the be all and end all. It's yeah. just trying to find partnerships and people that you feel join together much better in the team. Mm. I mean, that's why, listen, you never want a player to be injured, but with the, with the fact that Harry Kane can't play tonight, no. it just gives that opportunity to try out somebody else from a starting position rather than bringing them on, yeah. I don't know, 20 minutes, 15 minutes to go in a game where. You might be chasing the game or whatever it is that it has to be yeah, done. So, yeah, yeah. be interesting. No, I agree. And, I, and, and well, let's make one point clear. I think he, he wants to win every single game. Yeah. The, the whole England yeah. squad do, you of know. Um, momentum is so important in football. So the opportunity mm. to, to go and get a win tonight, um, you know, puts them in a good position to, to build to build some momentum ahead of, the, ahead of the tournament. Imagine from one of them boys could make their debut against Brazil. Oh, it don't come any better than that, does it? don't come any better. When you say it like that, yeah, it's quite special. Mess. What's your first game? Uh, Brazil. Yeah. <laughs> At Wembley. At Wembley. <laughs> yeah, it was yeah. all right. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> yeah. Did all right.